Good morning. morning. We welcome you to worship at St. John in the second Sunday after Christmas, the Word of God for our worship today. And this week, uh, we will be also focusing on Epiphany, uh, which celebrates the wise men coming to worship the Christ child at Bethlehem. And so the Word of God and its lessons will focus on that, that message that Jesus is the Savior for all people. We will follow common service with the celebration of Holy Communion in our worship this morning. And our first hymn of praise to our Lord is hymn 83, As With Gladness Men of Old, hymn 83. Please stand. We have gathered this morning to worship our glorious Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity, but I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in the peace of God's forgiveness that we have heard and received, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be, be to God. And the Lord be with you. We offer the prayer for this day. We pray. Almighty God, you have filled us with the new light of the word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The lessons of God's word for this second Sunday after Christmas focus on the truth that Jesus is the Savior for all nations. Our first lesson of scripture is recorded in the Old Testament book and the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, the 60th chapter. We were in the first six verses. Isaiah the prophet gives a forecast of what happened at Epiphany. Wise men came to worship the Savior of all nations and to present their gifts to him as their Savior. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is dawning upon you. Look, darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness is covers the peoples. But the Lord will dawn upon you, and his glory will be seen over you. Nations will walk to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Look up, look all around and see. All of them have been gathered. They are coming to you. Your sons will come from far away and people will carry your daughters on their side. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will race with excitement and burst with joy. For great riches from the sea will be delivered to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Caravans of camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba will come. They will carry gold and incense, and they will announce the good news of the praise of the Lord. Here ends our first lesson of Scripture. Please join with me then in the singing of our psalm for our worship, Psalm 72.
Our second lesson of Scripture is recorded in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the third chapter, beginning at the second verse. The Apostle Paul writes to the Christians living in the city of Ephesus of his mission and purpose given by God, that he had the privilege and the honor of proclaiming the good news of Jesus and his unsearchable riches to the Gentiles, or nations who had not yet known him. Surely you have heard of the administration of God's grace given to me for you, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. When you read this, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. This mystery was not made known to people in past generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that in Christ Jesus, the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and people who also share in the promise through the gospel. I became a servant of this gospel in keeping with the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. To me, even though I am the very least of all the saints, was given this grace to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to enlighten everyone about the administration of this mystery. In past ages, this mystery remained hidden in God who created all things. He did this so that through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was done according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, we can freely approach God with confidence through faith in him. Here ends our second lesson of scripture. Alleluia, we saw his star in the east when it rose and have come to worship him, alleluia. respect to the words and works of our Savior, would you stand for our gospel lesson? The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday after Christmas is recorded in the second chapter of Matthew's Gospel, reading the first 12 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, when Herod was king, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was alarmed and all Jerusalem with him. He gathered together all the people's chief priests and experts in the law. He asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, because this was written through the prophet, you Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are certainly not least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report to me, so that I may also go and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. Then the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stood still over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with overwhelming joy. After they went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Since they had been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. And having heard the word of our Lord, we now have opportunity to confess our Christian faith in the triune God. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we join to sing the hymn of the day, hymn 82, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, hymn 82.
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus, our Epiphany Lord. Amen. The word of God for our meditation as we focus on Jesus as the Savior of all nations is a portion of our second lesson for our worship recorded in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the third chapter, we read verses 2 through 9. Surely you have heard of the administration of God's grace given to me for you, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. When you read this, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. This mystery was not made known to people in past generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that in Christ Jesus, the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and people who also share in the promise through the gospel. I became a servant of this gospel in keeping with the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. To me, even though I'm the very least of all the saints, was given this grace to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to enlighten everyone about the administration of this mystery. This is the word of our Lord, and let us pray. Dear Lord, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear fellow worshipers of our Epiphany, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, most people love a good mystery, and the Bible is full of them. We just celebrated the mystery of and miracle of Jesus' birth. The eternal Son of God takes on human flesh and blood and is born as a baby, the God-man, Emmanuel, with us. There is the mystery at the beginning of your Bible of God's creative work, that he created the earth and the universe and everything in it in six natural days, simply by the word of his mouth. In the scripture, God reveals himself the mystery of who he is, one living, true God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have before us today another mystery, the mystery of Christ and his purpose. But Paul explains to us that it is a mystery that is revealed to us and known. In this coming season of Epiphany and its six Sundays, it focuses on different aspects of Christ's purpose and work. We just heard in the Gospel lesson from Matthew how wise men came from the East to worship the one born King of the Jews and to present their gifts to him. It is symbolic that Jesus is the Savior for all people, not just for the Israelites. And in the season of Epiphany and at Sundays, we will focus on the powerful and merciful miracles of Jesus, showing himself to be true God. And then that season will conclude with Jesus' transfiguration, how he changed in appearance before Peter, James, and John and showed all of his glory as God. These are the important purposes of this season of Epiphany, that Jesus is the Savior of all and that he is true God. Any epiphany message and sermon should include these important points. And that is why we focus on the Apostle Paul's message and sermon to the Christians living in the city of Ephesus in his letter to the Ephesians. For they are a good epiphany message. And any epiphany sermon, whether it's a pastor preaching to his congregation or a Christian friend to another, should include the important points of Epiphany, and to reveal and explain the mystery of Christ, a mystery revealed and known, to show that Jesus first is the Savior of all people, and then to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Jesus to all nations. The Apostle Paul understood the privilege that he had been given by God's grace and through God's power to preach and to explain to the Gentiles, that is, other nations that did not have God's word and promise from the beginning, as the children of Israel did, to explain to them 
this mystery of Christ and who he was, so that all nations would know that Jesus is their Savior. And so it was Paul's privilege to proclaim and to explain the mystery of Christ. In the Old Testament, as Paul explained in past generations, this mystery of the coming Messiah and Redeemer was not well known. Yes, it was revealed to the prophets by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and to the patriarchs through the promises that God gave them to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but to many people, this mystery of the coming Messiah was not known or it was misunderstood as the prophets would speak of a coming savior for all nations. But as the New Testament era arrived and after Christ, this mystery of Jesus was revealed to the apostles and made known to them. And so it was for the apostle Paul. After his conversion, the Holy Spirit enabled him to understand that Jesus is the savior of all nations. It was his privilege to reveal the mystery of Christ to all people. And that is the privilege of the season of Epiphany. You may be asking yourself in, my, in, in your mind, well, what exactly is this mystery of Christ? Paul explains that in verse six. This mystery is that in Christ Jesus, the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and people who share in the promise through the gospel. There's the answer of the mystery of Christ. Jesus Christ is the Savior, not just for a select group of people, the Israelites. He is the Savior for all nations. And that is why at the beginning of Epiphany, we celebrate how wise men or leaders from other nations came to worship Jesus as their Savior. We call Epiphany the Gentile Christmas as Jesus had come to be their Savior, and now they shared in the benefits of what Christ would do and has done. They would be fellow heirs of eternal life through Jesus' redeeming work. They would be members of one great body of believers that we call and confess in the creed, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. They would share in God's promise of peace through the forgiveness of sins and the joyful inheritance of eternal life in heaven. Yes, these were the blessings of the mystery of Christ that was revealed for all nations. But even today, there are some people who are confused or do not know about this mystery of Christ as the Savior of the world. And therefore, it is our mission to whom the Holy Spirit has revealed Jesus through the words of Scripture to our hearts and minds and given us the gift of faith. It is our mission and our purpose to explain that mystery of the Christ to all people. Because believe it or not, there are people today who ask the question, who is Jesus? Who is this Christ? And it's sad when people do not know so God has given you and me the privilege of proclaiming to others and explaining to them that Jesus is the Savior of all nations. We also benefit from the blessings of Jesus Christ as the Savior of nations because we are also among those nations, Gentiles, but we, through the Holy Spirit and through the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ, have come to know, trust, and confess Jesus Christ as our Savior. But by ourselves, our sinful minds would not accept this mystery of Christ as the Savior. The apostle writes in the New Testament that the sinful mind is hostile to God's word. It does not submit to it, nor can it do so. The fact that God of his free grace and mercy would give up his son to redeem a world from sin, death, and an agony in hell purely by his love would be foolishness to the sinful mind. And part of the reason that the sinful mind doesn't want to accept God's free grace in Jesus is that the sinful nature wants to work out its own rescue from sin. 
It is only through the word of God and its power of the gospel that you are listening to in this worship, that you read and meditate on in your daily and personal devotions, and through the Holy Spirit enlightening your heart through that word of God, that we can understand this mystery of Christ, that he is our savior from sin and the one who has given us an inheritance in heaven. It is only through that working of the Holy Spirit in the Word of God that we can clearly know and understand this mystery of Christ as a Savior for all nations. Yes, you also share in the blessings of Christ as your Redeemer. You have an inheritance in heaven. You are members of that great body of believers in Jesus Christ, the Holy Christian Church and you share in God's promises of peace through the forgiveness of all of your sins, assured to you in the sacrament of Holy Communion, and the sure and unending joy in God's presence forever in heaven. This is the blessing that God has given to you in the mystery of Christ. But there are many people and many souls who yet need to know of this great mystery. So let us be about that mission and purpose that was given to Paul and that is given to every Christian to explain the mystery of Christ, that he is the savior of souls. But there is another important purpose in any epiphany message, and it is the purpose to explain the unsearchable riches of Christ as our savior God. You see, when Jesus came to this world and was born as a baby, many people may think, well, that's just another human being, a good man who spoke good words. But Jesus is true God who has power to save. God's plan to rescue us from sin and from death and hell was completed in Jesus Christ, his son and our savior. The unsolved problem of our sins was solved by Jesus Christ, who is true God. And the unsearchable riches of Christ we focus on in this epiphany season. The unsearchable riches that he is true God, proved by his powerful miracles of mercy to show that he had power to save, his powerful words, the power of his atoning death on the cross that saves us, and his powerful resurrection from the dead that proves that we will live, for him, live with him forever in heaven. These are the unsearchable riches of Christ that we know and believe and hold dearly. These are the unsearchable riches that we proclaim to others. Because there are many other nations that yet do not know, and many souls that yet do not know of these unsearchable riches of Christ. The Apostle Paul had the privilege to reach out to many different regions throughout Asia Minor to proclaim Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we also have that opportunity today and for our future through our joint work in the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ as the Savior God who has power to save in the continents of North America and South America, of Europe and Africa and Asia, because many people yearn to know of the Christ who saves their soul. A child born in Bethlehem is the Savior God. He is the solution to the mystery of death and what lies beyond the grave. He calms our conscience with the peace of the forgiveness of sins, and he gladdens our hearts with the anticipation of an unending joyful reunion with him in heaven. Yes, the purpose of an epiphany message as it was for Paul and as it is for you and me is to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ. Six Sundays in the season of Epiphany move rather quickly as we transition from Christmas and the celebration of Jesus' birth through Lent and the focus on his death to Easter and the celebration of his resurrection. 
May you find satisfaction in knowing that the mystery of Christ has been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. He is your Savior, and He is the Savior God who has power to save all nations. May you continue to find and know that truth through God's Word. And may the Holy Spirit set our hearts on fire so that we proclaim the mystery of Christ as the Savior for all nations. Amen. Please stand. Praise and honor and wisdom and glory and thanks be to our God forever and ever. Amen. We join to sing the Create in Me. Let us join in the response to prayer for the Epiphany season. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You are in the day of grace, the Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far, that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. Give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. And hear us, Lord, as we now bring you our own private petitions. Finally, bring all of your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the full light of your glory and with all your saints and angels sing the everlasting song of triumph. Amen. We also join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the wonder and mystery of his birth, you have opened our eyes to the glory of your grace and renewed in our hearts the fervor of your love. Fervor of your love. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. seated. Members of St. John's Lutheran and visiting members in churches in fellowship with our Wisconsin Synod are now invited to join us for the celebration of the Lord's Supper. This true body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand for the sung response. Lord, how you let your servant We give thanks, 
Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you his peace. You may be seated for our concluding hymn for worship, hymn 735, Speak, O Lord. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Savior of the nations, good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Phil Gieschen from St. Peter, and it's my privilege to share the gospel with you in word and sacrament on this second Sunday after Christmas. May the Lord richly bless you in this new year. I've been asked to give uh, one message, uh, the reading of a letter uh, from Pastor Jason Baldwin. Dear members of Emmanuel and St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Churches, Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. I'm writing to inform you that after much prayerful consideration and seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance, I have decided to decline the divine call you have extended to me to serve as your pastor. I do so in the confidence that the Lord will lead the right man to serve as your shepherd. 
Our God supplies all our needs and will surely bless you with another pastor. <clears throat> I thank you for all the helpful information I receive from everyone I talked to during this deliberation process and in the call packet. I greatly appreciated your kindness and prayers. Please know that your brothers and sisters in Christ at Hope St. Charles will continue to pray for your congregations as they have been throughout my deliberation. What a joy it is to know that we are connected in Christ though miles may separate us. May God our Savior keep you all in his gracious care. In Jesus' name and service, Pastor Jason Baldwin. And in that connection, I've been asked to announce that on January 12th at 7 p.m., there will be a call meeting held in the all-purpose room. January 12th at 7 p.m. in the all-purpose for a call meeting for a pastor. God's blessings to all of you as you rejoice in Christ your Savior. Mm -hmm.